Man, I don't even remember the last time it was that we made a video talking about this prospect. And even so, we're talking about two of them here today because when it comes to the Detroit Red Wings, we had ourselves a great showcase of prospect talent from yesterday's World Junior Championships. I'm sure y'all are familiar with the fact that Axel Sandin Pelica got himself the best defenseman honors at the World Juniors, how he was a really good point producer, and how he was setting up guys left, right, and center, especially in that gold medal game. But ultimately, it was another Red Wings prospect who had himself the last laugh in this tournament. Because as Team Sweden was defeated by Team USA, the goaltender on the opposite side who walked away with the first place prize happened to be Detroit Red Wings second round pick in the 2023 NHL entry draft, Trey Augustine. Now that, in itself, by the way, is a pretty good stat because Augustine, as we had said, just recently drafted, 2023 guy, he's 18 years old, and he's already got World Junior Gold. In fact, that's his second World Junior Medal because last year he had bronze with the same USA squad. The fact that the gold medal winning goaltender, which is a tongue twister, try saying that five times fast, the fact that he's only 18 years old and is eligible to return next year is a pretty good sign. Because when it comes to Augustine and what we learned about him from this tournament, there's a lot more to love out of his profile than there is to not. We'll also talk about the biggest question the Wings may be facing as a result of this progression. So, Trey Augustine, as most people are familiar with, was one of the better goaltenders in the 2023 draft. He was ranked third overall by NHL Central Scouting for North American goaltenders and was projected to go somewhere in the second round. That's exactly where the Wings took him at 41st overall. And Augustine happens to be one of the smaller goaltenders that was available in that selection. 6'1", 179, definitely not tall for a goaltender. And this is kind of the thing that you have to pay attention to when you have guys that don't have the luxury of being six foot six or six foot five or whatever. Smaller goaltenders normally have to do things differently. It's just kind of the territory of the circumstances. So for Trey Augustine, there's a really specific kind of athleticism and awareness that he needs to have developed in order to become the goaltender that he is today. We've read this a few times, but let's just get the refresher out of the way. Scouting reportedly prospect says that Augustine has an excellent technical foundation. Whether you're talking about his post ceiling ability, his hinge when he rotates, or the strength that he has when he pushes off the post, he ranks high in every regard. Augustine is also a wizard on jam plays with below the goal line puck movement. He also has incredible net awareness, the ability to always know where the frame of the net is and hit his spot when retreating back to the post. This is a guy who is just aware of his surroundings, and his athleticism really helps him in being able to make these saves. We saw this at the World Juniors as he posted up a 936 save percentage in four games played with a 175 goals against average. He had a stellar World Junior tournament, and it was interesting to see how he wasn't named the tournament MVP for goaltenders. That honor belonged to Hugo Havlid, whose numbers on the tournament were still good, but not as good as Trey Augustine's. You could probably debate that, okay, maybe there was some hometown bias there. Eh, I don't really know. You could talk about the quality of the saves too. Augustine had a few breakaways that he had to stop as well, but Hugo Havlid, I feel, needed to be a bit better in the earlier games, especially since the final game, the gold medal game, saw Hugo get lit up by the American goal scorers, so maybe that's what tanked his save percentage. You could say beforehand he was already up there. But for Trey Augustine, as we had said, the fact that he is an 18-year-old goaltender who won this tournament and got the gold, that's a pretty good feat because when you talk about the other goaltending prospect that a lot of Wings fans have been hyped up about and excited to see, Sebastian Kosa, who is currently playing in Grand Rapids, he may not be the number one goaltending prospect in the Wings system right now, depending on who you ask. Now, of course, momentum plays a big part into what we feel about prospects, and for Trey Augustine, he just had such a good tournament to go with his NCAA numbers, but for Sebastian Kosa, this is a guy who, when he was Trey Augustine's age, did not exhibit the same level of success. And that is where the question lies. When Sebastian Kosa was 18 years old, in his draft plus one year, actually he was 19 for the majority of his draft plus one year, but we'll just say draft plus one, Kosa did make the World Junior team for Team Canada back in that tournament. He only had one game played, and he had two goals against and a 9 save percentage. Definitely not bad, but the fact is he wasn't the number one. 
Costa also had a 913 save percentage with the Edmonton Oil Kings and a 228 goals against. Now, those numbers are not bad per se, but they weren't the same amount of numbers that he had when he was drafted initially. Kosa in his draft year had a 941 save percentage and a 157 goals against in the WHL. This was the weird COVID year where a lot of the prospects were actually in the AHL and it was very odd just to see some of the lineups here. Guys were scoring goals like crazy. Goaltenders were making saves like crazy. It was very contradictory when you think about it. But Sebastian Kosa, when he was in this spot, as a first-round goaltender, he had a decline from his draft year to his draft plus one. Trey Augustine, you could debate, has had the opposite. He was a great goaltender with the NTDP, 926 save percentage, 33 games played, and in the NCAA at 18, he's doing pretty all right too with a 916 save percentage and a 297 goals against. But Augustine did play at the World Juniors last year, posting up an 891 save percentage and a 285 goals against. Now, the numbers aren't great, but he still did have a winning record. He went 4-1-0 in that year's tournament. But this year's tournament was so much superior, with better numbers, a better record, and more confidence too, since he was the guy to take home that gold. Now you could say, okay, well, that's probably just in line with the progression because, I mean, he was the main guy last year pretty much, so the fact that he had that year of experience and now he's getting better, it just bodes super well when you think about the international competition and what this means, how this could be indicative of what Trey Augustine's path could look like. Because being an 18-year-old goaltender in the NCAA and getting the starting job, that itself is already a pretty big deal. And the fact is, I mean, his save percentage and goals against average, they're not like top of the NCAA type of numbers, but it's still a huge progression to go to from his NTDP days. Sebastian Kosa, on the other hand, has kind of declined. And as we've been talking about over the past few years, it's been a very strange development path for this player ever since making the AHL's Grand Rapids Griffins in 22-23 last year. He had a 7-8-3 save percentage and a 5-5-7 goals against. Those numbers stink. He got sent down to Toledo. He was all right there. 9-13 save percentage, 2-5-6 goals against, 46 games played. But that's the third division pro league. That's under the AHL. Now, to Kosa's credit this year, with the Griffins, he's gotten a lot better. He's at a 9-01 save percentage and a 2-9-5 goals against average. Still not fantastic numbers, but it's at least a step in the right direction. And so with everything in mind, I wanted to ask the question to y'all Red Wings fans, who is the top Red Wings goaltending prospect right now? Is it Trey Augustine or is it Sebastian Kosa? I know if you were to compare the two like right now, say, okay, NHL game is tomorrow. Who would you rather put in that Augustine or Kosa? Like you'd go Kosa because he's a pro guy. He's a lot bigger. He's older. So there's more experience there. But just in terms of potential, where do you see Sebastian Kosa and his potential now that we have seen his progression throughout the AHL and ECHL? Do you think Trey Augustine has a realistic path to becoming a better goaltender long term? Do you think the height is that much of a disadvantage? Kosa has five inches on Augustine. He's 6'6". We didn't mention that in the video at any point, but it's part of why he ended up going so high in the draft, not to mention his super stellar WHL season in that 2021 season. But for Sebastian Kosa, he's a goaltender that has a very different set of skills than Trey Augustine. He doesn't move much. He doesn't really like to expend much energy. He's just very, very safe. And that's the type of game that he played that made him so successful in the junior level. It's not the same kind of game that Trey Augustine plays. Augustine's a lot more calculating. He needs to be more athletic. He needs to move faster. He needs to push harder off the post when he goes from post to post. Stuff like that because he is a smaller goalie. It's a different type of foundation that both of these guys have been able to build for themselves. But the question I think is important to ask here is, who's the best? Who's the number one goaltending prospect right now? considering all the development and the progression of both of these guys. And I get it. You could very well say, hey, Lego, this is kind of a pointless video. Like, why do you need to pit these two guys against each other? Why can't you just be happy with having two good goaltending prospects? And yeah, that's very fair. It's a good problem to have. Good prospects, right? But I'm just bringing it up because for Sebastian Kosa, there is a very legitimate argument that you could say that he's actually declined in terms of his overall hype level and progression from when he was a draft-eligible prospect. We all thought this guy could be an elite goaltender challenging Wallstead for best goalie in the draft when he was drafted because of that WHL season, but now... He's struggling hard in the AHL. Jesper Wallstead is playing in the AHL too, but he's looking fine. He's doing really well. So with Augustine in the up and up and Kosa 
kind of getting back up there after having a really bad setback? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What's the answer to this question? Who is the number one goaltending prospect for the Wings right now, and why do you think that is? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. Vrishar Shrolls 99, and bye. <laughs>